Everybody. Barry Lewis. Привет. I'm Bianca and I'm from Poland and thank you for having me here today. Thank you for the invitation. I think this is a very great conference and I'm very impressed with it. It's the first time here in Armenia uh, and you can listen to so many great speeches, you can meet so many interesting people, you can experience all these beautiful minds and this is amazing actually, personally for me as well. So, Francesca, great speech, great workshops. Everybody else, good job. Seda, Nara, you rock girls. Uh, I'm so proud of you and you are making like historic events, so congratulations. And how are you today? Good. <laughs> Do you feel like you are taking part in such important event? Do you feel like you want to start something new? New thoughts, new job maybe? Maybe you have like new ideas for yourself, maybe you want to change something? Uh, I feel this way and I'm sure you are feeling like powerful, impactful and unstoppable and this is how I feel actually. So what I'm going to talk about today? So actually I have a very nice invitation for you, but first I want to introduce myself with a short story. So now I need the switcher. Ah. It's magically appearing, okay. So this is, this is the first computer in my home. So this is Amstrad Schneider. And as you can see, instead of uh, disk station, it has the tape recorder. I am so, so old, yes. And this, this is having this beautiful emerald screen and it was very unusual to have this kind of equipment at homes in 80s in Poland, even in Warsaw. So you could say that I was privileged somehow. And I had, when I was growing up, I had a lot of like robots, computers, and access to new technologies because my father was creator and editor in chief of the very first magazine in Poland on computers, very popular one, called Bytek, which means little byte. So you could say I was lucky, but it wasn't the case actually. Uh, because, you know, in the 80s there were so many stereotypes about gender role of women in society, about how female brain is working, and girls girls were perceived by the society as not suitable, unsuitable for computer science, for example. And, and actually my parents were just following the scheme and they were encouraging my brother to use all these computers, to, to play with it, to learn how to code, and not me. It was not actually meant in the mean way, my parents weren't bad people. Well, they were just, you know, following the scheme. And yesterday I met Mary, Mary here, uh, a volunteer, a great volunteer here, but also uh, the young woman who visited Warsaw last, this June for, for the conference I was organizing. And Mary told me that actually in her little village, uh, this is the same situation still, and that their, her parents were just stopping her from going into STEM era. And I think this is not the situation only in little village in Armenia, but in so many other places, also bigger places around the world. And coming back to Poland, so my brother was like learning how to code, he was exploring technologies, and now he became, of course, like IT specialist, developer, and he's having a great career in Samsung Corporation, the Korean one. And I, little girl, I was sitting next to him, and I was just observing this. 
And I was just like, I was so curious. It was so fascinating that if you are writing a code, there is a result or there isn't. Sometimes it's error, of course. But nobody told me just to join, you know, to, to try by myself. And unfortunately, I wasn't Ma Maria Kiris Kudowska. I wasn't like a brilliant uh, Polish researcher who won uh, two Nobel Prize. She couldn't study at the time in Poland, so she left because he was a woman. So she left to France and he made a brilliant career there. But I wasn't like her. I was just a very little shy girl and I haven't dared it. And many, many years later, I became a political scientist, cultural study expert, and I was studying also in Germany. And I became exposed for this new way of thinking. Uh, it was the beginning of, of the uh, year 2000. And, and I was meeting people, I was just observing activities there, and I realized that actually what happened in my home uh, back then, it wasn't okay, that the society worked this way, that maybe I could have a big potential in STEM era, but we would never know. Like in so many cases of other women before me and after me. And when I understood this, and when I understood that this is so fucking unfair, I, and when I, I just seen these mechanisms, I decided and I promised myself to do everything I can that no other little girl had been deprived of encouragement to go to the science and technology and innovation. And no other little girl would be excluded from this inspiration. And that became my mission. And this is why I created Perspective Women in Tech. And now, 15 years later, this is one of the best organizations for women in tech and science in the world, the, one of the most successful. And as you can see, I'm not shy anymore. So about perspective, the next slide, please. With our logo. OK. It will come, yes. So this is our logo. So about perspective. So pers what is perspective about, actually? So this is non-profit, non-governmental organization which is supporting women and girls and science and technology and which is like advocating for women empowerment. And in perspective, we believe in women and their power to make the world a better place. We also believe in science and technology as a tools for us, the only tools actually, to know, to understand, and to find solutions for the most urgent problems of today. Women, for the first time in history, can really do anything they want. And thanks to their beautiful minds and the new perspective and the new power they bring, world has changed chance for a new history, her story. Oh, thank you. This is so important right now. And this is such a privilege to be able to create this change. Because now, these past three years especially, these difficult years, these challenging years, these years full of pandemic terror, full of wars here in this region. And now the war in Ukraine, which breaks our hearts like every day. And also this like coming shadow of upcoming climate catastrophe. It makes this all so challenging. And it shows so clearly that this old world managed in traditional, oppressive, conservative, patriarchal way must go because 
as a humanity, we came to the end. Climate catastrophe is coming, this is the fact. And what brought us to this situation is this way of thinking which is em embodied in patriarchal world. So we need new thinking, new ideas, new power, or maybe change power. And we need women with their wisdom and the, another experience they bring, another like, perspective they bring. And women are changing the world right now. They are so active everywhere in the world. In Armenia, they were responsible in the, such a big degree for the revolution. In Ukraine, they are fighting. In Belarus, they were trying to fight uh, dictatorship. In Poland, they are fighting for like, reproductive rights. In Argentina, now in the US, women are fighting for their rights everywhere in the world, but they are fighting not only for their rights, but they are fighting for human rights, for tolerance, for peace, for democracy. And it's powerful. Their voice is so powerful. And I think we should watch short movie together just to have this feeling about how powerful are women. So, the movie, please. actually so lucky to live in 21st century. As Joel Harari said, this is this controversial uh, thinker, author of best-selling books like Sapiens, for example. In the last 100 years, there is only one like, really successful revolution, and this is the feminism, feminist revolution, because it really changed and is changing the social structure. And it is doing this in the most peaceful way. But we should not forget about women from the past, because without them, without their fights, their commitment, their devotion, we wouldn't be here. But the rights are not given forever, and we need to like, watch them carefully. For example, right now in the US, uh, there is a problem with a legal abortion right again. So you need to, like, it's not given forever, yes? This is very important. And in perspective, we are committed to, like, to supporting the emergence of the new generation of leaders in technology. 
Why technology? Because business, politics, and technology are the field of power. And technology is the less, you know, the less uh, taken care of, I, I would say. So in perspective, ah, it's not this one. So in perspective, we, we are caring about this. We are having a lot of program like mentoring, scholarship program. We are organizing camps. We have accelerating program for women in tech and science. So we are doing a lot of things, and massive things. In 2017, we started a very important project, it 4 c uh, In frame of this project, we were sending stu female students from IT departments, like a lot of them, like hundreds of them, into the small villages and the small towns in Poland that they will bring like programming knowledge, robotics, new technology inspiration to those small communities. They were just teaching boys and girls, but the idea behind was that the teacher was a woman. So she was expert in technologies. So it was the game changer because the, those communities, teachers, uh, schools managers, parents, and of course children, could see another role models because this is so important. And this program was a game changer for us as well. And we got like a, a lot of appreciation for it. European uh, Commission gave us a European Digital Skills Award for the best action for women in tech in Europe. And it gave us these wings to make something really big and to dare to go like really international because we understood that we have a know-how, network, different kind of capacities and energy and will to do something really important. And this is why we created Perspective Women in Tech Summit, uh, which is the huge, huge meeting for women in tech, science, innovation, but also activists, uh, public policy, journalists, media, uh, businesswomen, businessmen, from the whole region, from Poland till the Central Asia, uh, just to meet all these great talents together and work together on the future of the world. And this is this slide. We started four years ago. Uh, we wanted to invite, like here, 1,000 people, but 2,500 came. It was a problem with scattering, with lines, with everything. But it showed that there is a need for such a platform. And one year later, 2019, we have six and a half thousand people in Warsaw for this meeting from 100 countries. And then 2020 came. By the way, I started 2020 in March here in Yerevan. I came for the business trip and lockdown started, which was a very interesting experience for me. But anyway, 2020, uh, we needed to switch online, of course, and to change everything. But still, we managed to do it. And, and online edition of Perspective Women in Tech Summit was also very, very cool. And this year, this June, in Warsaw, uh, we had almost 10,000 people. So we came back in person and offline. And it was such a great experience. All these wise, younger, and older women together. It was such a powerful thing. And we also managed to have a a delegation from Armenia, uh, 13 great girls and women, and we were able to give them scholarships to come, and SEDA was organizing the group, so thank you so much for this support. And we have groups like this, like from, from 10 countries, like scholarship groups also, yes? And I think this is a good idea for you just to show one minute movie about Perspective Women Tech Summit, because later I want to invite you for this event, so you need to know what I'm inviting you for. So, movie, please. We
so, so it was beautiful and it was so powerful because we had on the stage like people from countries which are in the war or right now, but you know, women are the future and women are not like for war as much. So they were talking about how they feel about the future and what they want to bring to the world and they were doing this together. So the next edition of this beautiful event will be 14 and 15 of June 2023 in Warsaw. And we have, uh, we have 15 scholarships to give to you. Uh, we will cover your travel cost, accommodation cost in Warsaw, and of course the summit ticket. And uh, we like uh, invite people from all these areas, but not only, not only students studying, you know, computer science, but also, you know, young professional interested in new technologies, having startup, having business, developing in this. So, uh, so this is the list of recommended faculties, but this is not closed. So how to apply for scholarship? So you need to go to the polandithub.pl website. And there is application there. You just need to like, write a little bit about yourself, about your motivation, and wait for results. Of course, uh, we have a lot of time till the June, next June. So uh, the results coming uh, you know, at the beginning of the new year. But you can do it now, and it's OK. We will not miss it for sure. And of course, you can also contact me directly with questions. Or like, I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm uh, Instagram and Facebook. And you, can, you are like, uh, welcome to like, approach me everywhere, because, because, yeah, because I'm happy to, to be in contact with you. Yeah, and what else I can say? We are unstoppable, and there is a time for women. Female is now, as you know, as our motto says. And this is up to us and up to you to do anything you want in the way you are feeling is the right way for you. Uh, we are not the same. We are from different countries, different generations, different genders different like some of them of us may be more conservative some of us may be more progressive but i feel that we go in the same direction maybe with different you know steps and styles and this is beautiful and and i feel privileged that i could share my thoughts with you today thank you so much